This is Lindsay Clark, your instructor for molecular diagnostics, and this is just a short presentation on measuring nucleic acid purity and calculating quantity. And this will go with lecture um, four over nucleic acid extraction and quantitation. So I just wanted to run through a few examples to make sure that this makes sense to everyone. So here we go. First, let's work some examples determining DNA purity. Remember the OD260 measures nucleic acid and OD280 measures your proteins. And we take the ratio of these to determine your purity. So example one, if we have a sample with an OD260 of 0 0.469 and an OD280 of 0 0.252, first let's determine the ratio for this sample. So we divide 0 0.469 by 0 0.252, we get 1.86. Now, is this sample acceptable? So remember we have those ranges um, that tell us if the purity is acceptable and for what testing it's acceptable for. So if it is 1.8 to 2.0, it is acceptable. And it's acceptable for all testing. So yes is the answer to that. Now example two, we have an OD260 of 0 0.258 and an OD280 of 0.225. And this gives us a ratio of 1.15. So is this acceptable? Well, remember in our ranges, anything less than 1.6 is not acceptable. And this is well below the 1.6 cutoff. So this is not an acceptable specimen. And example three, our sample gave us an OD260 of 0 0.529 and an OD280 of 0 0.321. Now the ratio for this sample is going to be 1.65. Now remember that middle range between 1.6 and 1.8, those are acceptable for some testing but not all. So that means that this specimen is acceptable for some test. Um, so it would be acceptable for something like PCR. It would not be acceptable for something like DNA sequencing. Now we're going to work through some calculations to determine the double-stranded DNA concentration and the yield. So a quick note, anytime you see that um, DSDNA that actually stands for double-stranded DNA. So the formula for double-stranded DNA concentration is 50 micrograms per milliliter multiplied by your OD260 reading multiplied by your dilution factor if there is one. Now remember we multiply our OD260 reading by 50 because we know that one OD260 unit equals 50 micrograms per milliliter of DNA. For yield, we will take the double-stranded DNA concentration we just calculated, divide that by 1,000 because we are converting micrograms per milliliter to micrograms per microliter, and then we multiply that by the total volume of our sample. And this will tell us how much DNA we have in our sample. You will sometimes see this written as micrograms per 100 microliters, and that's kind of a way to standardize it to some extent. For this course, we are going to multiply out to just micrograms of DNA, unless I tell you otherwise, meaning we will multiply by our total sample volume. So for sample one, we have a DNA extraction that gave us a total volume of 50 microliters. The sample was diluted one to five, and it gave us an OD260 reading of 0 0.307. And to determine the concentration, we will multiply 50 times 0 0.307, which is our OD260 reading, and multiply that times 5, which is our dilution factor. And this is going to give us 76.75 micrograms per milliliter. Now we can take that concentration, 76.75, divide it by 1,000 and multiply by 50, which is our total sample volume, 50 microliters, and that will determine our yield, which is 3.8 micrograms of DNA. 
So let's work through another one, example two. This is a DNA prep that gave us a total volume of 100 microliters. It was diluted one to 10, and it gave us an OD260 reading of 0 0.368. To get our concentration, we multiply 50 times 0 0.368, our OD260 reading, and then multiply by 10, our dilution factor. This is going to give us 184 micrograms per milliliter. Then we take that concentration, 184, we divide by 1,000, and then we multiply by 100 to get our yield of 18.4 micrograms of DNA. So those are some good examples for you to work through. Um, I want you to make sure that you can work through these problems and to let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm happy to um, talk to you on the phone. We can meet via Skype. We can do through email, however works for you. And we can work through some more problems if you need some extra help on these.